next, next uh, lecture uh, will be by Denis Salikin uh, from uh, our university, our university uh, department of physics. Please, and uh, Denis, you may uh, start. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you for introduction. Um, thank you invita for invitation. So I'm going to talk today about the chemical solution deposition of bismuth ferrite films uh, and uh, layer by layer control of the coverage and composition. Actually, this work is done in collaboration in the different universities in Ural Federal University, University of Aveiro, and Lomonosov Moscow State University. So first I, I want to say some words about motivation of this work so for sure i think everybody who works in ferroelectrics field and um, other uh, people as well know that bismuth ferrite is one of the most interesting i think in multiferroic and across a variety of materials because it's uh, um, have unique high curie temperature and nil transition it's in near the room temperature so uh, simultaneously, you can find in this material ferroelectric and magnetic properties, and uh, this can be very useful for applications for organizers of different kind of ferroelectric or multiferroic me um, memory devices. Uh, the other important thing uh, is uh, in that uh, in this film, in 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 a shape of thin films, it was shown that the polarization is extremely high, let's say 55 microcoulomb per centimeter. So it also makes sense for different kinds of devices based on the interaction between magnetization and polarization. And um, why the chemical solution deposition is interesting techniques to produce BF4 because uh, chemical solution deposition is really easy and cheap method which allows to create uh, strict uh, stoichiometry and uh, allows to create large wafers and the large wafers are really interesting for commercial applications uh, in, in comparison to such a PLD or um, other deposition techniques, uh, scattering, sputtering technique, the chemical solution deposition allows to create the homogeneous film in the large size of the wafers. And Usually, in order to create thick films uh, in by cell gel road, people usually use a multi-layer technology. So they deposit it layer by layer in order to um, achieve the necessary height of the film. For example, if you need film micrometer scale, micrometer thickness, you need to to create uh, ten or even more layers. And uh, Actually, it's uh, the layer by layer deposition is used to avoid the agglomeration of the particle and solution and, and the chief um, film is more um, quality. Yeah. But uh, the problem of that uh, technique is that uh, we never know what happens in each layer of the film. So when we do characterization, mostly in mostly papers, uh, people try to do characterization of the final state of the film so they don't know what happens with the morphology in one layer and second layer how it influenced by the crystallization process so and this is uh, was uh, um, reason why we decided to study this by the microscopic techniques which will be discussed further you know to do sample fabrication we used very simple way to create so we use we standard substrates, uh, it's a CO2 covered by platinum. And if you talk about the, how usually salt gel uh, BF4 is prepared, it usually contain different steps. So the first step is uh, deposition. So when you create a, a solution and you deposit this solution on the substrate, and after that you use a drying step. So you need to create a, a so-called gel films on the substrate and uh, you for that for that you use uh, temperature procedure so this temperature procedure has absolutely different parameters if you check in the literature it can be 
from really low temperatures to high temperatures. And in our case, we decided to try to use two different procedures. One we call low temperature drying and the other one we call high temperature drying. So both of these uh, pathways are really used, uh, really used in um, literature to create these films. And after that, when we, we do the drying, we put uh, the created uh, gel films in the, in the furnace and we do further pyrolysis and crystallization steps. So the, the procedure is absolutely, was absolutely equal for both kind of films, for the films for the different drying conditions. And after that, we do the slow cooling down to room temperature and um, inspect the properties of the films by the, by the combination of the different micro microscopic techniques. So we start first with optical microscopy and you may see so that the both films looks really uniform on the scale of optical microscopy. So we don't see in not no some cracks, no not uh, arguments, only small particles of the dust, but, but in, mostly is there, is there is no any significant inhomogeneous in the film. So it's really, if you check the ruler bar, you see that there is quite uniform on the large scales, so the scales of micrometers, even millimeters. And to inspect further the properties of the film, we go in the, uh, we go to the first to normal X-ray measurements and what X-rays show that there is a big difference between these two kinds of films. So if we check the morphology on the microscopic scale, it's okay. I mean, in scale of optical microscopy, if we check the X-ray, we see that there is a difference and this difference mainly in the amount of the secondary and main phases. You, you see that in uh, films which were seen to have with long time and low temperature drying, we see more crystallized film with more, with more uh, high quality orientation and without any large amount of the phases. And we also uh, try to estimate the size of the crystalline size or green sites and we found that in, in the series of the films uh, which were created by low temperature drying uh, we found that the grain size is quite larger that in, in, in comparison to the to the low temperature film. And what we do next, um, we try to see what happened in the, each layer during the layer by layer deposition. We try to study the uh, films with the different number of the layers. And this is some results of these studies. So in the first image, this is a high temperature dried film. And you see the, the first image is uh, just a zold film, uh, just, just a gel film, which was not crystallized yet. And you see that after the deposition, we have not really uniform coverage of the film, but the surface, you see that there are different regions which uh, um, void, uh, and you may see the platinum substrate by the contrast and the um, backscatter at uh, electron microscopy. And that means that it doesn't have a perfect coverage of this film. And even after crystallization, so the second step, this uh, um, imperfect coverage um, conserves. And in comparison, if we do low, long time and low temperature drying of the film, the coverage is absolutely perfect, so we don't see any platinum substrate. It is very important that if even if we do um, further deposition, I mean, we, if we put another layers on the on the film, so we for sure we can cover all the surface, but the morphology of the films become quite uh, imperfect. So if you see two layers deposited, three layers deposited films, so now it's cover all the surface, but you see that the, it creates a kind of pores inside the film. And this is not really good because the spores can, as we, as we show later, they can really provide enhanced uh, leakage current in the, in the films. So in order to further inspect the properties of the film, the functional properties, we go to the uh, scanning probe microscopy techniques. And uh, 
I want to introduce um, the two basic methods which we used. So one is the PSA response force microscopy. I think many of you know about that. So the PSA response force microscopy operates uh, with um, electric field applied to the tip. And uh, if we have some ferroelectric domain, so piezoelectric electric phase, this phase gives us an, a signal which we register as a displacement of the cantilever by the normal um, optical beam deflection system. And um, the other technique, we also can apply DC voltage to the uh, cantilever. And in that case, we will have some current flow through the tip surface contact. And if we have the difference of the conductivity in the different areas across the surface, we can check uh, and uh, visualize the distribution of the conductivity by this technique. It is also important, uh, it was demonstrated in our other paper, that um, we also can do quantitative estimation how much phase is really ferroelectric in the material. So what we, how we do that, so we, we just do some scan of the surface scan of the material and we check the histogram of the piezo response. So usually it looks like uh, that image in the center of the slide. And you see that it's uh, overlapping of three big peaks. So the peak in the center, it's, it's uh, related to the noise level. So it's related to the absence of the piezo response. And the right and left peaks, is a uh, different domain state. So states with the polarization approximately up and approximately polarization approximately bottom. And if we measure as well the noise level of the system, we can use the threshold, so the half width of the peak, to separate the regions without piezoelectrically active material. If we talk about BF4, uh, in BF4, uh, single phase BF4 is piezoelectrically active, and all the secondary phases are piezoelectrically inactive. So in that case, if we have the statistics of such a scan across the surface, we can um, measure quantitatively the area of piezoelectrically active phase and piezoelectrically inactive phase. And this comparison, uh, we can calculate the percentage of uh, piezoelectrically active, piezoelectrically inactive phases. And later, if we compare this percentage with uh, fraction of the phase from the X-ray, it was found that they quite similar and uh, despite of the absolutely different uh, basics of these techniques. This, uh, exactly this technique we implemented further to um, our BF4 films. As you see in this image, this is uh, representative images of the films with a different number of the layers. So to see that the morphology of the film on the, on the top, um, line top row of the images is not really perfect. So we, we have small grains collected in the agglomerates and we have some pores inside the films. And even with the increasing of the thickness of the film, yeah, the pores become a bit smaller, but nevertheless, they still remain in the films. And this actually makes sense. So if we check the PFM, you see that the PFM contrast is not really so nice. So we have some regions which is clear piezoelectrically active with this black and white and these images. And we have large uh, areas which are not piezoelectrically active. And when we implemented this algorithm, which I discussed in the previous slide, we can uh, create such maps of piezoelectrically active and piezoelectrically inactive phases. And we can estimate the fractions of these phases. You may see that um, we have such a trend with, with that in one layer film, we have lots of piezoelectrically inactive regions. With, with the first increasing of the layers, we have a bit decreasing of this area. But later, when we go further to seven layers film or main, more layers film, we have increasing of the area as well. And uh, the comparison of that is, uh, uh, is done in this table. You may see that there is uh, quite large quantity of the non-polar phase even in uh, sick films. And um, especially what we did also, we estimated the effective piezoelectric coefficients. And we see that 
Also, with the increase of the number of layers of effective prosthetic coefficients significantly decreases. And it makes sense. So, these films are really imperfect. So, and in order to compare these films with other sets which were created with the low, uh, long time and low temperature drying procedure, we, uh, uh, no, so first we also. Uh, I also didn't talk about that, but uh, if we if we see these pores, yes. So we we, we tried to uh, understand how these pores influence on the leakage current, which is uh, a problem of the BF4 material. So when we go to the leakage current measurements, so this is the same region which we studied the phase distribution by the described techniques. And in the exactly in this position, we also measured the current. So this is a current on the normal scale, and this is the current of the logarithmic Z scale. And you may see interesting thing. So first, um, we have really increase on the current in the pores. It's reasonable because we have a, a smaller resistance of the pores, so we can, um, and they, they can, um, conduct much more and even if we put another layer on, on the top so this is one layer yes, and we put another layer on the top it's still there is some uh, current spikes and especially they seen on the in the logarithmic scale so we have this large um, increase of the current which are connected with the position of the pores yeah but we also have the another contrast which is not so visible and it means that and this pore, this contrast is not corresponding the, to the position of the pores in the second layer. And it means that we measure the current which goes through the pores on the third layer films. It means that uh, all the film is not uh, uniform. So we have more or less like a conductive channels inside the film and these channels uh, operates really increased enhanced leakage current. and actually these four um, really hamper to enhance, enhance properties of the material, so they reduce effective piezoelectric properties, both in, in, the, in, uh, in the sense of uh, leakage current and in, in the sense of the piezoelectric response. And later we try to do the same measurements on the a low temperature film and we see that here the situation is absolutely different so in the beginning in the first layer films indeed we have some uh, small areas with the piezoelectrically inactive phase it also can be sourced by the conductivity across the boundaries of the grains which also make possible but later when we deposit additional layers so three layers and 15 layers you may see that the amount of the secondary phase significantly decreases and in 15 layer films we have about 95 percent of the um, phase uh, active phase piezoelectrical active phase and this is makes sense so it's, it's more or less single um, phase and um, probably the five percent they also can be attributed to the contribution of the grain boundaries or something like that and uh, as you may see the piezoelectric coefficients is also on the quite high level so it's uh, really allows us to um, postulate that this kind of low temperature and long time drying really makes sense for the final topography and, and morphology of the film so we can uh, uh, discuss it in the point of the morphological changes so when you deposited film um, it is makes sense uh, when we do the further annealing in low temperature or high temperature if we do really high temperature we have a non-equilibrium process and we have really fast evaporation of the liquid phase and this liquid phase can create um, can create um, let me let me show on these images so the liquid phase can really can create the channels in the film which are responsible for the pores yeah so it's just a process of uh, evaporation really fast evaporation 
In the case if we have low temperature and long time drying, we have quite uniform removing of the liquid from the film and the coverage of the film doesn't create these pores or cracks in the material and it allows to create more perfect structure, morphologically perfect structure. And it makes sense as we see for the further crystallization process and uh, useful properties of the film. So this is a comparison of these um, two sets of the films. You may see that uh, in the low temperature dried films, we have great enhancement of the fraction of the polar phase in the thick films. And we have uh, increasing of the piezoelectric coefficients in, in many, many times. So uh, in conclusion, so it was like um, trying to understand how morphology of the films and uh, um, the preparation process of the step-by-step -step deposition influence on the final properties of the BFO films. And we found that the layer by layer control of the morphology is really important to understand what phase distribution happens during the process of, process of material deposition. And the combination of the PFM and conductive IFM methods allows to inspect it in very, um, very carefully. And we find that the long time and low temperature drying procedure is very important to create perfect material with high piezoelectric coefficients, which is in line with the piezoelectric coefficients of the um, single crystalline, many ferroelectric single crystal materials. And but high temperature drying is uh, really um, not the best solutions uh, for creating the uh, perfect films, uh, high quality films. So, and uh, the, from the physical point of view, we can say that uh, during the layer by layer deposition, we have uh, accumulated morphological changes. And these accumulated mor morphological changes can be not seen at the final stage. And when we check the morphology of the final sick th film, uh, but these accumulated morphological changes can impact significantly to the leakage current, to the porosity of final structure. So I want to thank you everybody for your attention. And uh, actually, I also want to announce that we have uh, now a special issue on the coatings and the um, a special issue of the MDPI journal coatings. And this topic uh, is related to ferroelectrics materials and piezoelectric materials. And we have, uh, we want to actually invite you to impact to, to this journal. Actually, the deadline is now changed, so we can, uh, because of this COVID problem, so we can, we accept uh, your contribution until the end of the year. So if you have some interesting talks or um, results, you can publish on this special issue and for sure it will be useful for, um, for people. So thank you for your attention uh, and I'm ready to answer your question. Thank you, Denis, for a good lecture. Okay, now we are open for discussion. Uh, any, any questions? Any? Okay, maybe I will start with a very small question. I'm not understand very well. Uh, slide eight. Okay, okay. You may come, oh, uh, 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 no, any, uh, uh, no, not this, eight, I don't, no, okay, eight, uh, I, 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 any slide with uh, uh, red, yes, this is, what, yeah, is, yeah. what is red uh, image, what is means, red? Yeah, 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 so actually what, is, yeah, yeah, so the thing is, so this, I will start with that one again, so we can estimate the, ah. the noise level, and this is here, the blue one is, uh, in a, I mean, maybe, uh, yeah, let me check. So maybe I, I'm a bit confused with the colors. No, no, I mean, the, the blue one color is corresponding to the non-polar phase. Yes, yeah, this so is, I under, under, understand, but how you 
Okay, you use uh, piezo response image, yes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we use piezo response image. No, and only we... you, you increase contrast. Yes, it's like this, yes. No, no, it doesn't work like that. So actually what we do, we just switch off the, the, the AC voltage from the microscope and we measure ah, a oh, noise yes. level. Oh, and when we have yes, a noise yes. level, we can do some threshold uh, measurement. So we know the threshold of the noise and we just say so. Below this value, we have okay. I understand, but how you obtain image after this? Ah, how we obtain image? So we yeah, just yes. I'm ask about uh, yeah, yeah. So actually, what we just take every image. point you do this is or how? Yeah, yeah. In each point, in each point, ah. we understand is this value of the piezo response is low with the stress or high as the stress. Ah, you determine it. Uh, 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 zero level, yes, as yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Shift, and shift. Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So noise level, and no, if it's higher than noise, and they uh, use uh, column, more strong column. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I understand this. Uh, uh, red is without yes, yes. No, and and absolutely. Yeah, yeah okay. an opposite. Red is is uh, is uh, piezo active. Uh -huh. Okay, and uh, okay. Any questions? What is your roughness? Fifty. Uh, it's sexual depends. But so why so why so rough? This is fin fi, fin film, yes. Yeah, yeah. So this is a uh, poly. Why, so, why why is so rough? Yeah. So I mean, if in comparison of two sets, the first set is more rough because of this process of evaporation, fast evaporation of the liquid, which creates this. Uh, agglomerates of the particles. Ah, if this is after heating, yes, after heating. Yeah, yeah. Ah, no, yes. And in, in the other case, the roughness is not so high, but nevertheless, I mean, like that. Uh, but um, in that case, there is also have some roughness because this is a salt gel road and it creates a, a polycrystalline films and they are usually a bit rough than the epitaxial film. Mm -hmm. But one layer, it means what it means. This is one time growth, yes? Yeah, I mean, the, the normal process of the, the yes. chemical solution deposition is when you create one layer by the deposition from chemical liquid phase, and yes. the, then you do another layer, another layer, another layer. So, yes, of course, morphology is like normal for soil gel. Yeah, yeah, and uh, we just try to compare the different thickness or so different number of the layers to, to trace the morphological changes. Mm -hmm. Okay, I don't understand. Uh, maybe it's uh, 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 it's no not magnetic phase, yes, this is because it's, uh, it's uh, multi multiferroic yes material. Yes, this case maybe. This multiferroic is antiferromagnetic. Yeah, so. yeah, this is this, uh, you don't do any uh, magnetic measurement yes so yeah 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 this is not, this so is uh, it's not uh, because this is no, no uh, magnetic any yeah, yeah. So, uh, so, under so, room so. temperature yes, mfm under cannot room. show any contrast on this what is your plan on future with this is fuel Ah, okay, so actually what we are going to do is, um, I mean, this is step was like a technological step. So what we wanted to do, we want to create a, uh, some high quality films because what we checked in the literature is quite difficult. And what we do, we're going to do further, it's a studying of the uh, properties of the boundaries in this film because it's quite interesting and these films are really um, model to understand the properties of the grain boundaries uh, in this material, especially the conductive properties, ionic conductivity and electronic conductivity, because most of the studies of the film are devoted to the um, domain wall measurements, so the properties of the domain walls. And in that case, we have an opportunity to study the properties of the grain boundaries and uh, from a technological point of view, it's much more important because the grain boundaries has a natural interfaces in all uh, polycrystalline materials. But, in, in, but increase uh, current uh, and grain boundaries from the result, yes? 
Yeah, yeah. So the, pro the problem of the so you want to understand how the current across the grain boundaries influence. But what voltage? What, what voltage you apply during your measurement? Uh, for this kind of concrete yes. film, you need to apply small voltage, so two, three volts. And but it's very low current level. It's, it's, uh, only uh, as I remember one slide, it was like eight hundred uh, picampere. Yes, it's very small. No, no, it's uh, for yes, for, yes, for, this is very small. It is. For conductive, no, I, I don't know what is stability of uh, this measurement, but this is very low level. Of, uh, uh, actually, the current is not ah, so we, ah, low. Yeah, uh, this is not, ah, this is not, uh, this is Car, uh, current, no. Yeah, no. it's a non-ampere level, actually. But this is peak ampere, this is non -ampere. but what is, why is? Uh, this is? Because this is a logarithmic scale, so this is the same image, but in different scales. Why I use here the logarithmic scale? is because we have really high current across the pores, about uh -huh. 20 nanoamperes. But in the bulk, yes, yes. we, we have okay, low yes. currents. Yeah, yes. and it is ah, similar. You have very, very uh, far from uh, boundary. It appears some current. Yes, and, and grand boundary is increased uh, yeah. more strong. No? Yeah, 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 this also makes sense. No, 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 I'm here, okay. This is 20. But now, now it's quite developing technique. So, uh, conductive FM now allows to oh, measure yes, the femta amperes current. So the femta yes, amperes current. Yes, it's possible. Who, who, yeah, it is possible who, now, so it's not a big problem. Now we have rapidly developing techniques and we're trying to increase the sensitivity. You, you have this technique now, yes? Yeah, 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 yeah. So. Good, good. present the last year, yes, if you remember, current uh, part okay. for FM. Yeah. Okay, maybe we finish. Denise, thank you very much.